in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. You are listening to Daily Bread Devotions with Father Eustace Yame, a selection of Don Bosco. Your word, Lord, is a lamp for my steps. Stay tuned. It is Friday, the 20th of September, 2024, 24th week in Ordinary Time, and today... We remember St. Andrew Kim Taegon, priest, and Po Chong Ha Sung and their companions, martyrs. For centuries, Korea was close to all outside influences, and all contact with foreigners was forbidden. No missionaries went there. Nevertheless, a number of laymen sought to find out all that they could about the outside world through the annual embassy to Peking. Some books about Christianity fell into their hands and they were converted. Because of the secrecy involved, it is impossible to date the origin of Christianity in Korea with any precision. It may have started in the early 17th century, but the first known baptism is that of Nesong Hong, who was baptized under the name of Peter when he visited Peking in 1784. The first known martyrs are Peter Young and James Cohen, who in 1791 refused to offer sacrifice on the death of their relatives. Over the next century, over 10,000 Korean Christians were executed with great cruelty and many others perished. For most of this period, the church in Korea had no priests and was an entirely lay phenomenon, something similar to what happened in Madagascar. In 1794, the first priest to visit Korea, a Chinese, found a community of 4,000 Catholics who had never seen a priest. He was executed in 1801. Two further Chinese priests sent at the request of the Korean church had a similarly brief ministry. Some 30 years later, at the request of the Korean Catholics, Pope Leo XII established the Prefecture Apostolic of Korea and a new missionary phase began. The first of these missionaries, a French priest from Paris Foreign Mission Society, entered the country in 1836 and was beheaded three years later. Many others followed. Andrew Kim Taegon, the first Korean priest, was secretly trained in Macau, entered Korea in 1845, and was executed in 1846 together with his father. A lay apostle, St. Paul Chong Asang, and many others perished at the same time. A further major persecution occurred in 1866. In all, 103 of the Korean martyrs are celebrated today. They are mostly lay men and women, some married, some not, some old, some young, some even children. And we want to pray for the Korean church that is built on the blood of the martyrs to continue growing in strength and to continue being the beacon of hope in Korea and in many other parts of the communist world. Participating in the proclamation of the word of God for today are the following daily bread members. Agnes Kairuthi Mudaura from Nairobi, Kenya, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the first reading. Agnes Tarisai Shagare from Gweru, Zimbabwe, celebrating her birthday today, takes for us the responsorial psalm. And proclaiming the gospel is Father Sibusi Sovi Mukese, a Marian healer missionary working in Coxdad Diocese in South Africa. Let us pray. O oh God, who have been pleased to increase your adopted children in all the world, and who made the blood of the martyrs 
St. Andrew Kim Diagon and his companions, a most fruitful seed of Christians, grant that we may be defended by their help and profit always from their example. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. First reading. If Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 12 to 20. Brethren, if Christ is preached, preached as raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has not been raised, then your preaching is in vain, and your faith is in vain. We are even found to be misrepresenting God, because we test find of God that he raised. Christ, whom he did not raise, if it is true that the dead are not raised, for if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. If Christ has, has not been raised, your faith is futile and you are still in your sins. Then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ have perished. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are all men most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruit of those who have fallen asleep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm, Psalm 17, 1, 6 to 7, 8 and 15. Response is taken from Psalm 17, verse 15 B, and the response is, When I awake, I shall be filled with your vision of your presence, O Lord. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence, O Lord. O Lord, hear a cause that is just. Pay heed to my cry. Turn your ear to my prayer. No deceit is on my lips. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence, O Lord. To you I call, for you will surely heed me. O God, turn your ear to me, hear my words. Display your merciful love. By your right hand you deliver from their foes, those who put their trust in you. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence, O Lord. Guard me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. As for me, in justice I shall behold your face. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence. When I awake, I shall be filled with the vision of your presence, O Lord. Gospel Acclamation Matthew 11, verse 25 Alleluia Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have revealed to, to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Luke chapter 8, verses 1 to 3. At that time, Jesus went on through cities and villages, preaching and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him and also some women who had been healed of evil spirit and infirmities. Mary called Magdalene, for whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Chusa, Heatherod steward, and Susanna and many others who provided for them out of their means. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
St. Paul continues with the doctrine of the resurrection as we come to the end of his letter to the Corinthians that has given us so many lessons. Because come Monday we are going back to the Old Testament and this time we are with wisdom literature dealing with the book of Proverbs. Tomorrow we are celebrating the Feast of St. Matthew and we usually have the special readings in such occasions. St. Paul challenges the Christian community at Corinth, especially those who had received other doctrines that made them get confused about the issue of the resurrection. Those who had listened to the Sadducees party, the Sadducees were Jews. But they were Jews who never believed in angels. They never believed in the resurrection of the dead. They never believed in spirits. They were very materialistic in their approach to religion. And they confused a lot of believers. Is this not the same as what we are experiencing in our world today? We see the confusion that is found in many of our young people. And this confusion is brought about by so many Sadducees on social media platforms. They open various platforms and those people who are preaching to them, uh, denying the power of Christ, denying the resurrection or even the existence of God, is making them to be confused or to think that those people are speaking the truth. And this is very dangerous. Do not at all stray from your faith. You are not mistaken at all. And do not think those of us who are still preaching this life of the resurrection are not educated. You will be shocked when you come to know of our CVs. Despite our knowledge, despite our logical training, we are humbled by this illogical fact. Somebody went against nature and that was Jesus Christ. He died and rose from the dead. And he's the one saying, follow me. He's the one saying, don't follow anybody who has never come back from the dead. Follow me. He's telling even my Muslim brother, my Muslim sister, follow me. Because every Muslim believes only one among prophets will come back, Jesus Christ. How can he come back if he is dead? He's still alive. That's why he's able to come back. <laughs> and so St. Paul says, you know what? There are some of you who are saying there is no resurrection. If there is no resurrection, then Christ has not risen. That is logic. And if Christ has not risen then our preaching is useless. And if our preaching is useless, we are the most miserable of all people, especially those of us who spend our energies preaching the word. We are the most miserable of all people because our doctrine is based on this. But Christ has been raised from the dead. That's why I'm able even to raise my voice. And because he has been raised from the dead, I'm able to lift my head up high, knowing that life is not just about what we experience here on earth. There is something more to life. And that's something more I rely on. And that something more gives me a reason to smile even when I face pain, when I face suffering, because I know there is something more to life than just what is given to the eye. I love this and I want to let everyone understand the power of the resurrection that Paul is preaching to us. The gospel passage of today tells us of the women who understood that power, the women who ministered to Jesus. Luke wants to tell us that his gospel is special because it is only Luke who presents to us women ministering to Jesus and his disciples. And Luke wants to tell us the role of women in the church is very, very important and very recognized. It was recognized by Jesus. Jesus did all that he did with the help of these women. These women who made 
the church in the apostolic era stand and if you are a woman in the church do not feel any smaller your role is big in the church and continue doing what you are doing you are doing it for christ do it with all passion glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be well do thou end amen the lord be with you and with your spirit and may almighty god bless you the father and the son and the holy spirit amen blessed friday to you thanks be to god